Hello, welcome back to Greenhill Junction. Uh, so this has been the winter project for me. Um, so let's just go all the way back to November and see how we got from this to this scene uh, over the past few months. So this video uh, is going to be all about getting the scenery done under the bridges and that scenery is going to be uh, embankments and a river. Um, I was putting this off to be quite honest because I didn't think I had the skill or the knowledge to do a convincing river. However, we're doing the scenery on this side of the bridges. Um, if I do the scenery on that side, then I won't be able to remove um, the bridges to get access to the scenery. As it is, doing the farm has meant that the blue bridge is not coming out anymore. Uh, mistakes were made. So the red bridge can still come out because um, as you can see, I have very limited workspace. I can't actually get my hands in between two bridges and going underneath, I can't reach um, much further than the red bridge, never mind getting to the Metcalf bridge at the back. So I'm pretty sure I left enough space to get those fish plates out. I can disconnect the track there and there and then the bridge deck will lift out, the pillars will stay and that will give me room to work between the blue bridge and the uh, the, the Metcalf bridge at the back. Um, back scenes will be going on at some point, however as you can see in the background it is a typical Scottish winter and it is pouring with rain and I've only got room to cut wood outside, so I need to wait for it to dry up basically. Um, but I can work on the river without the back scene, hopefully, hopefully. Um, so the cunning plan is to basically have the river as wide as you can see the ruler there um, in the middle, and then have gradual embankments working down to the edge of the, the, edge of the river. And it's going to be quite a shallow river, um, basically because uh, the th way I'm thinking of doing it, I think that's going to work best. Um, and I'm a bit wary of using resins because, well, if I bring you down here, you'll see that there is a uh, <laughs> sizable gap between my back scenes and the board, which is probably going to continue all the way across. Um, and I just don't want resin pouring out everywhere. Um, so that kind of scuppered a deep river plan. Um, so we're going to go a shallow river, which could always merge into a, a deep river if the shallow river idea starts going a bit wrong. Um, so I'll show you how I'm going to do the embankments first, because I need to get the scenery done and the water is really the last thing that goes in. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just work through creating the scene um, and we'll see what happens. As you can tell, I'm extremely confident about this uh, knot. I'm uh, really hoping it doesn't go wrong. So, um, yeah, let's get on with building the embankments. Right, embankment building. Um, so, jumped ahead a few steps here, just because it's what you've seen me do before with the chicken wire. Um, it's really effective in creating that sort of natural, random... Uh, landscape and um, so I went with it again I had to do a, a few things um, or a couple of things just to get the chicken wire to essentially work and um, so I've had to put in wood um, kind of not supports but just angled bits of wood here so I had somewhere to staple the chicken wire into because um, I didn't want to staple up here um, and it will look a bit uneven so I just cut up random bits of wood to almost the height of that and then used a miter board that I would usually use for doing the coven in the house to put an angle on it. Um, and then I've stapled it in and that'll just get um, paper mashed over. Uh, the red bridge came out pretty easily, which is good. And it's currently sitting over there. Um, so the other thing I had to do was I had to just put in the same scrap bits of wood along the bottom of these pillars. Again, just to give the chicken wire somewhere to staple into because I don't want to staple into that because that would probably create a kind of unnatural angle. Um, so it was better to have it stapled into a horizontal angle and then bring it down. 
Uh, now, the, these are just scraps of chicken wire that I used. Um, and what kind of happened, which uh, I think is going to be all right, is the river is wider coming out of this bridge and then it narrows down to the sort of 30 centimetre width. Um, so, paper mashy time, which is always a fun time. I'll come back once, uh, once we've done that and maybe painted them up. Right, that's a uh, um, basic landscaping done for the river banks. Um, usual, usual method: the chicken wire, the paper mache, and then simple brown post poster paint to get a base colour on. Um, so you get an idea now of um, where the water is going to be. It has ended up a little bit of squint. So if you look at the bridge, these kind of double panels are evenly spaced. So you can see that bank's coming up to there and that bank's coming up to there so it's a it's a wee bit squinty that way but i'll see if i can correct that when i do the actual water but i might just leave it depends what's going to be more complicated Um, still not figured out how to face this off that'll to be honest that's just a a, a job that can be done at any time it's obviously going to neaten up this scene but it's not an essential thing to do um so now i'm going to move on to kind of doing the not the landscaping but the basic stuff along the edge of the river and the and the banking um, and i also have a wee additional problem that i need to solve or two additional problems back here so the landscape's coming down to there there's a slight slope there underneath that arch so what i'm going to do is just put a bit of cardboard and paint it brown as if that arch has been built into the banking and um, so it's like that on either side and you can just see poking out there as um some cork because i had to just lift that bridge up when i installed it by the the three mil cork and the cork's still showing there so my cunning plan for this kind of whole area is to use various grades of stones and well stuff like that and um, to create this sort of you know, as the river goes along, it deposits stones on the banks. You know, it can be sand, stones, boulders, trees, etc. So the idea is to build that up along each bank. And then on the back here, I think it's the old bridge in Stirling over the River Forth, um, has supports in the water. And round those supports, they've built up. It's almost like a triangle of stones. I, I don't know why. It's a really, really old bridge. Maybe it's just the way they built up the foundations. Um, so my idea is to do that on each one and have a kind of triangle of different grades of stones just built up a wee bit on there um, or on each of the pillars to cover up the cork. So I've got a mixture of stuff for that. So um, I've got the uh, the grey stones that I used way, way back to make the dry stone walls. Um, I've got the ballast for kind of finer stones. Um, I even went outside and picked up some of the rough cast that's fallen off the house for bigger stones. Um, got the uh, the cork dust from the platforms, uh, and for I don't have any sand, so I wondered, or I'm going to try if I just use this scatter, and then obviously once everything's stuck down, it's all going to get painted, so it doesn't matter what colour everything is right now. Um, but that scatters the finest stuff I've got, so I thought I could maybe simulate sand or, or certainly fine coarse dirt. Fine coarse dirt? Is that even a thing? You know what I mean? Um, with that. Um, so that's the cunning plan to use these things and just create borders um, and use certainly the bigger stones and maybe some of the ballast for the, the kind of, we'll call it foundations to go around there. Um, so I'll get cracked on with that and get it painted up um, and I've also got my somehow managed to make a hole there I don't quite know how that happened so I need to just put a bit of paper mache over that and these need one more coat of brown paint just to cover up the last thing you print as well um, so yeah crack on with that and um, you know we should see hopefully a landscape forming right so there's a the start of it um, it's currently soaking in um, what do you call it, scenic cement as I figured that was the best way to get it to stick down so all I've done is kind of scattered it along the edge of where the water would flow and I've tried to make it a little bit random you know because water would flow in and out and again reason for using the scenic cement as well two reasons because it's quite liquidy itself 
Um, so I was kind of hoping that it'll just kind of spread the ballast out a little bit. And also it sticks better than like the PVA um, kind of mix. And because this is essentially all loose different grades of ballast, I really wanted it to stick quite well. Um, there's the cover up on the pillars. Uh, let me just see if I can get you down kind of in that area. Um, yeah, so that that's the kind of thing I was going for. So that's just the grey stones and the ballast, and then you can see the grey stones up the side there, kind of covering the cork. To be honest, even if there's a wee bit of cork showing, you're never likely to see that because, well, unless they're a running shot like that, but still, you can't really see it. Um, but yeah, that's what I was trying to, to describe, the sort of ballast foundations. Um, so it's not looking too bad. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. To be quite honest, I'm just trying to create a scene. And if anyone thinks this is a good idea to do it with the bridge in, it's not. It makes it a complete pain. Um, but I'll let that dry. And I mean, also it's going to end up getting blended in. I may put some stones in the in the river bed um, just so I can create some variety when I'm actually creating the water, which is the next challenge. Uh, but I see how this dries, and I'd imagine once I start landscaping all that, I should blend in a bit better. Um, but that's what it is right now, so we'll come back to it um, once I decide what, what the heck the next step is. So I'm um, back in a bit. Right, welcome back. Uh, moving on with uh, landscaping um, and I've just went for this sort of um, rough kind of country scene so you've got the two sort of stages either side so this side is just the, the standard um, fine turf earth and fine turf soil along with some really fine topsoil from the garden that's put down uh, and you can see that's blended the stones in quite nicely. Um, I was going to maybe like brown or black wash some of these white stones but the camera isn't making it look quite bright but you can see some of them have caught some of the scatter and it's dulled them down so I think I'm just going to leave them because I don't want everything just brown um, and I quite like the contrast there. Uh, move over this side and so this is the next stage with all the static grasses. Uh, so it's a mix of two, four and a little bit of six mil grasses um, and I've put in so there's some of the straw that's up there and um, just to try and get a bit of um, continuation down there yeah that joins not brilliant but if I put a row of bushes across then it's just gonna I think it's gonna make it look worse so I'm just gonna leave that as it is just now um, and yeah I so um all the different static grasses put down. I don't use layering spray. I use um, cheap and cheerful maximum hold hairspray. It's exactly the same thing. Works exactly the same way and it's a heck of a lot cheaper. So um, just go get that out of your local supermarket. Um, and I've tried to make sure the grass doesn't have a straight line. So, you know, if the river's been in spate, it comes up and takes the grass away and just leaves bare soil. So that's what I've been trying to go for there. And then just randomly dump these bushes in the scene just to um, make it look a bit more wild. Um, now, underneath the bridge um, was a particular challenge because, yeah, there's there's not a lot of space. Um, however, in reality, there wouldn't be a lot of light either. So what I did there was just spray some hairspray in and then I got the coarse turf on my hand and went under like that and just kind of chucked it in. And you can't really see it because it is quite dark there. I don't know if I can get a torch on while I'm videoing. No, I can't. Um, but it just gives a bit of greenery there, but, um, you know, like it's, it's in shade, so there isn't much that would be growing there. Um, so that's that's created quite a nice embankment, I think. Uh, going over to the other side, um, so what I've decided to do here is I've just stuck a whole load of those stones in underneath the bridges. Um, can you see it for this side? Uh, not really, no, because we're focusing on the bridge. Um, just to cover that up, the bit of cardboard wasn't really working. Um, if you see it there, yeah, you can kind of see it there. So I've just built up the stones and tried to join it into the landscape. Um, so here, again, it's just a mix of the static grasses. Um, comes a wee bit further down because this is steeper, so it'll channel the water more. But again, got a wee kind of void there where the water might come up. 
Um, and again, there's more sort of stones and things for the edge of the river there because it's widening out. And just shove bushes in that gap to cover it up and then continue it down the side of the bridge to build it in. A few more bushes there. Haven't quite decided what I need to do here. Um, but aye, and again you can see that um, you know some of the stones have got some of the, the scatter stuck to it, which has kind of dulled that down. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna leave them. Uh, so I'll do the same to that side. And then it's the bit I'm putting off, it's how I'm going to do water. Um, so yeah, get that done and we'll come back to the cunning plan for the water. Okay, moving on to the water surface. Um, so you can see I've kind of started here. I'm using the technique that I saw uh, the chap that does Chandwell model railway. Um, it's an O-gauge, no sorry not an O-gauge, an N-gauge model railway uh, on YouTube. Um, he's very, very artistic, very, very good at creating all his scratch built stuff, well worth a view. But he did this technique um, to create a, a river scene on his railway. Um, so I'm trying to copy it because what you find in, well certainly what I've seen is that water is never or very rarely flat. There's always a ripple in it. There's always a, a flow in it. Even on a really, really still day, there's some sort of um, disturbance on the surface. So I didn't just want to go with like a, a resin, a, a varnish and just have a totally flat, glossy surface. So I'm using this technique to hopefully get um, a rippled surface because at the end of the day, I've got what should be a river being forced through three ar four arches and um, coming into a wider section and then off camera it's narrowing under the blue bridge and then widening out again so that will cause disturbance as well as well it's, the idea is it flows from there that way and um, so it's quite straightforward this um, it is frustrating trying to do it under a bridge particularly when you've got about a three centimeter gap there so once again I would suggest don't do this when bridges are in but you know I do things the hard way um, so all you need is any sort of toilet paper. I mean, I've got this sort of pattern stuff that seems to be working all right. 50-50 um, PVA glue mix. Um, and I've got a couple of um, paint brushes. So the big one I find is good for getting the stuff stuck down. And then the little one is good for adding the detail, particularly around the, the stones and things like that. And really it's it's... It's as simple as you just get plenty of the PVA mix on your um, brush. And I find it's good if you start at an edge and kind of seal the edge in. Obviously, uh, well, toilet paper uh, is very absorbent for its uh, purpose. Um, so if you kind of go quite heavy with the glue um, and get it stuck down. And then all you're doing is... Oops, he says as that bit comes away. So all you're doing is dabbing it to create the ripples um, and what the guy in Chandwell said was make sure you work in the direction that your water is going to be flowing in so all the ripples go the right way so that's why I'm working from front to back and I'm finding it's oh, I hope my finger doesn't stick to the paper I'm finding it's it's ideal if you try and get the whole thing wet don't leave any dry bits because they just stick up and then end up I don't know, getting stuck to the brush or causing issues or rips or that. So, um, so I just kind of work along like that. It's it's not exactly difficult, and I like it because it, again, it, it randomizes things, and um, so the ripples kind of form wherever the paper wants to form ripples. Um, so it takes away that that kind of human element of oh I've got to have a ripple there, I've got to have a ripple here, the, that looks better, this looks better. I mean yeah you can change it. You can see I've just flattened all that down to get rid of that big bump. But then the ripple forms somewhere else. Um, so you get that kind of nice flowing water surface. Um, and I know like um, you can obviously see the join in the paper there and there. But the plan is well the, the plan is the plan is going to be that this all gets painted once it's dry and then I've not decided whether I'm going to do a, a resin or a clear varnish on top. 
So essentially this is almost like creating the river backwards. So as much as this is the bottom layer going on this scene, this is actually the, the top of the water, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm hoping that when I come to paint the paper, once all this is dry, and it'll probably take a couple of days to, to dry it fully, then um, those joins over here won't be won't be visible um and if they are I'll, I'll come up with another one but yeah there you go so that's it all stuck down and then what i've been doing is just getting the little brush and on bits like this just making sure it's really molded round the stones uh, and there's a wee bit that's too high there so i can get that down i'll get that down if not it doesn't really matter i'll just paint it And also just get right around the edges and make sure that's all stuck down as well. And you can see the little brush makes a different pattern. So you just, can, again, got to just mould it in. This stuff, once it's wet, is very, very pliable. And uh, as long as you manage to keep it unstuck from the brush, it will stay in place. Uh, so yeah, so as you can see there, quite a nice rippled water surface. Quite a flat, fast flowing river, I would say. Um, so I'm going to continue on with this, get the whole thing done, um, paint it, and then see what it's looking like, to be honest. Um, so i come back once, uh, once we've moved on. Right, just a wee quick addition to this uh, this riverbed creation thingy, my jiggy. Um, so what I've just found is that if I am laying sheets next to what will be the river bank, if I use the straight edge, it makes it look, well, you can see there before I even put any glue on it, it makes it look rather straight and unrealistic. So what I've been doing is I've been ripping just a strip off the edge and then marrying that up. And you can see that already creates a much more random, rougher edge. And I particularly noticed it here. So all I did was got little strips and rip them and put the ripped edges down there and it's given a much better rougher edge than I did I would pretty much had a straight line there um so yeah just another wee another wee hint but um yeah you can see it's it's coming on quite nice so um yeah back in a bit okay that's the river bed painted um I went with a kind of greeny browny brackish kind of colour um because big rivers well they aren't blue no rivers are blue as far as I know um, big rivers tend to be a kind of darky brown colour. Um, I mean, certainly up in the highlands of smaller streams, some of them are crystal clear, some of them are really peaty. Um, but I'm going for a big river thing here. So um, I created that colour just by mixing those three paints in a ramekin until I got the colour you see. Um, and it took a couple of coats just to cover all that up. What I've then done is I've taken the black and the brown and I've dry brushed on so you can see there's subtly black in the middle, there's a wee bit of brown down the sides to try and create an illusion of, of depth. Um, not sure how successful that's been to be honest, but it, it just breaks up the one colour. Um, and then I've done it, sorry the light is no great today. Um, it's more black in there um, to kind of signify that those channels might be deeper from where the, the water's eroded them as it's been forced through the, the bridge. The other thing you'll notice is I've taken the white and I've just picked out the top of some of the ridges uh, to try and give the impression of faster flowing water. Um, again, you know, water, the water's been forced the, through these small archways um, so it'll be flowing faster. And it's not white water rapids, but you know what I mean? When you see a river that's flowing quite fast and the waves just kind of crest and you get that moment of white when I, I presume the light catches the water a certain way or something like that. So that's what I'm trying to replicate there. Again, just to give the impression of of a flow of water. And you can see quite nicely there the black bits indicating the sort of deeper bits of the water. And then I kind of cut down the white as you come, occur, come towards the blue bridge. And if I come over, you, there's just the odd ridge picked out here because the river's flowing much much slower and um, the other thing i've done is i got some twigs i just broke them up 
and I've strategically placed them on the riverbank um, just to show or to simulate debris that's been washed down um, when the river's been in spate. So the final thing I've got to do is varnish it. Um, so I went to Hobbycraft and I got um, this. It says acrylic paint, but it's actually acrylic gloss varnish. It was only £3 for that wee bottle. What is it? 59 mil. It's a random amount to have in a bottle. But I don't think I'll need too much for this. And if I need more, I'll just go buy it. But there was no point in buying a big tin out of B&Q or something like that. Um, so yeah, varnish. And that'll be the scene complete. And we'll uh, see what it looks like then. Right, that's the varnishing done. Um, three coats it took, and I've still got just under half of that bottle of three pound varnish from Hobbycraft left. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty reasonable, one pound fifty for the varnish. Um, but it's given it a nice shine. You can see the effect of the ripples there. Um, it makes it look more like a sort of running water rather than just a just you know a shiny surface. Um, if I bring you over here. I had to uh, repaint the white bits because they, for some reason the varnish covered them up. Not too sure on that. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm not sure if it just looks like a flock of seagulls or if it actually is achieving the effect that I'm after. But I really like how this bridge looks now with the, the sort of, you know, it's built into the water. Um, considering at one point I was considering putting a back scene across there and just blocking off that bridge. So I'm really, really glad I didn't. Um, Bring you back down here, it's quite sunny today. Uh, you can't really see the effect of the, the white. Oh, there we go, if I block out the sun, it's a wee bit better. But you can see that, you know, looks quite effective, in my opinion. Um, so, final things to do is put the red bridge back in. I left it out just so you could see um, the bit in between there. Um, and I've got some facings to put on at the front. And uh, aye, and that's it done. So I'll get that done, show you it all complete. I'll get a few running shots, and uh, and that's this project final finished. Right, that's a scene done. Uh, as you can see, the red bridge is back in, um, and I've finished off the edging, um, which really tidies it all up. Uh, that is just one and a half mil balsa wood. Uh, which I've cut the size and painted black, although it's looking quite streaky on the camera. It doesn't look that bad uh, in front of me, so I'll probably give that another coat. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Um, the river, I think, looks quite effective, given that it's um, toilet paper, glue, water and uh, varnish. It's, uh, it's not bad at all. Um, yeah, it would look better if um, we didn't have a tartan curtain here, but I didn't get around to fitting the back scene, um, so that can just stay on the to-do list. Um, and also what you see there is my, well, brand new to me, Union of South Africa. Um, it's the 75th anniversary edition, um, so slightly older model, but it's a DC, well, it's DCC ready, I've fitted a chip to it. Um, and apart from a cab door being missing and the, I think it's the reversing rod, fell off. Um, I got it for under £100 delivered and I, it's immaculate and it runs like a dream so quite pleased with that as well and I'm now looking about to see if I can get um, other members of the Great Gathering for good prices and maybe build that up in the in the um, layout. But yeah so we'll do some running shots now so you can see the work from different angles and see the trains running over the bridges but um, let me know what you think, leave me any comments that you have, uh, like and share the video if you think it's any good. Um, and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the layout as we progress it will be along this way into um, the other side uh, once I figure out what the heck I'm doing over there so yeah um, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you again soon cheers